guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, you guys are getting another thrift to treasure. So in this video, I am taking Fairy Merry Christmas, which is the new IOD transfer. And I am upcycling seven items that I recently thrifted. I cannot wait to show you what I came up with and I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. Before we get started, I'm going to give you a peek at Fairy Merry Christmas. The moment that I opened this up, you guys, I fell in love with it, just like the Glen Holly. I mean, the beautiful details that the IOD sisters come up with, oh my gosh, they're just amazing. Now, you can definitely use this um, transfer and the Glen Holly together. So keep in mind, you don't just have to use these with these. Some of these little fairies you can incorporate with the Glen Holly transfers as well. In today's video, I'm just going to just work on Fairy Merry Christmas, but this can be used all season long as well, not just during the holidays and I love that. So let's go ahead and get started. For project one, I recently thrifted this cutting board. Looks like I paid $2.99 or $3.99 for it. Pretty good price. Anytime I find one, I cannot not pick it. I am using Sandy Blonde from DIY Paint. And keep in mind, all the products that you are seeing in today's video, you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. So to start this project off, I am applying two even coats of Sandy Blonde to this piece. I'm going to let it dry very thoroughly and then we're going to continue on with the next step. After seeing the IOD sisters sneak peek of this uh, little transfer, I knew I wanted to use it in one of the projects. Uh, so I thought she would fit perfectly on this cutting board. And if you haven't used an IOD transfer before, super easy. You just um, pull off that backing, lay it down where you want it. Now keep in mind, once you lay it down and you rub it, you're not moving it. So make sure that you have it positioned just right. What I do is I like to start on one side and I hold that backing and I just start rubbing. If at any point uh, the piece of a transfer does not come off, lay it right back down, rub again, and it will be perfect. Now, once you get the transfer laid down, you do want to take that piece of backing that I'm holding on to and rub it all over your transfer. This is called burnishing, and it really embeds that transfer into your project. Next, I'm using Holly Lane, and this was a mold from the last holiday release. I'm sure other stockists still have it in stock. I unfortunately recently sold out. I'm also using the amazing casting resin, and that comes with part A and part B, and what you do is you just mix 50-50. After you combine the two, you start stirring until they're completely combined, and then you start pouring it into each of the the molds that you want to use and it sets up within 10 minutes. Super duper easy to use. I also like to use these little silicone containers. It just makes it easier um, because the uh, resin just peels right out. So I will link the resin and the silicone containers in the description below. Once the resin sets up, it does turn white. There are two different types of resin, the 10-minute resin or the overnight. The 10-minute resin turns white. So I do recommend pulling them out right after they turn completely white. It is much easier to also apply them to your project before they completely harden up. I'm using Gypsy Green and I am applying just an even coat of Gypsy Green to the entire front. And then I am taking uh, Marquee, which is a red, and I am applying Marquee to all the berries. 
After the molds dried, I did use Big Top to completely seal them. After that, I'm using the Golden Rule. It's a gold gilding wax. I'm applying a nice even layer to each of the molds and then taking a piece of paper towel and wiping away any of the excess. I just think this gives it a really vintage antique type of look and it looks perfect with that transfer that I applied to the cutting board. Now it's time to apply the molds and I laid them all out how I wanted them. I am using tight bond and that is definitely my go-to when applying molds. The key here is you don't want too much of the tight bond because you don't want that glue oozing out. I do recommend having a piece of paper towel there to wipe off any excess on your that you get on your fingers, but I flip each of the molds over. I apply just a little bit of tight bond and rub it to the edges. Again, you don't want it seeping, so when you lay it down, you don't want it oozing out. Uh, then there is definitely a lot more cleanup afterwards. I do that to all of them. I leave it uh, uh, sit flat while it sets up and really then your project is complete. I did decide I wanted to add a little bit of black wax to the edges. What I do recommend is when you dip into the wax, I always leave the lid there and I try to dab off some of the excess wax. It just helps me have better control over my wax and not so much to work with. I go around the entire edge. I add just a little bit. I wipe off any of the excess and then I decide I want to add just a little bit to the front and again just uh, apply just a little bit. Take my uh, paper towel, wipe away the excess, and it just adds a little bit of dimension to that piece. The last step is I am going to add a bit of twine to this, and this is my go-to twine that I picked up at Walmart. I just feed it through, tie it off, and then this project is officially complete. And you guys, I love how this turned out. For project two, I thrifted these galvanized containers a while ago. Actually, there was a stack, I would say like 10 or 12 of them. And I kept thinking about how I was planning on upcycling them or using them in my home decor. I finally pulled out three of them and I am planting all three two even coats of Sandy Blonde. I'm leaving the very edge and the inside as is. I like that two-tone look where it's Sandy Blonde on the base, but then the inside and the rim is the galvanized look. Now it's time for the fun part, breaking out the Fairy Mary transfers and figuring out which image I want on each of the containers. I want to make sure that the images look good together. That way, if I sell all three to one person, it will look good in their vignette. And if they want to buy individually, they are able to do that as well. Now it's time to apply the transfer. And just like I had with the cutting board, the exact same thing. You pull off that backing, you lay it down. The only difference is with this one, there are some type of little grooves in the container. So what I do here is I start in the center and I press down in that first groove 
move. I get that transfer in there really well, and then I start working my way to the left. Once I get the transfer all embedded into the entire container, I then work my way right. I just want to make sure that because there are like indentations that the transfer is not just sitting over that indentation, but actually in it that with all three containers the exact same thing just make sure that I start in the center work my way over and then over to the other side and that is really key when you're working with any type of surface that is not completely flat I also recommend just really making sure that you take that backing and really burnish the transfer into the item that you're applying it to. Again, just to make sure that it it really is embedded in there. Now, the last step is after I get all the transfers completely put on the containers, I want to seal my entire piece. And I am using Big Top. Anytime you apply a transfer to a project, you do want to seal it. And especially with DIY paint, you want to seal that as well. So I am using Big Top from DIY and I'm applying one even coat to all three pieces. I felt like the containers needed something so I went into my stash of a ribbon and I felt like this was too thick but the perfect color. So what I'm doing is I am taking my scissors and I am going to cut the actual ribbon in half. I do this all the time for my pumpkins that I make and it makes the ribbon go a little bit further. Uh, the one edge does fray a little bit but I actually like the look of that and I'm applying one even ribbon piece to each of them. I'm just tying a double knot and I am also going to go back I, I think and just add a little bit of a touch of glue around just a few spots on it just to hold it into place. It does hold pretty well but I'm thinking with transferring it from my home to Cranberry Fest there could be an issue. For project three, I found these flashcards a while ago and I had always envisioned I was going to do something similar to this. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about this project just yet. I think it's cute. I wonder if the transfer is a little bit too big on a couple of them. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this. But for the first one, the three times three, I add a little bit of the music paper that I had left over from when I tore um, the paper for my books. I'm applying that with liquid patina and I'm letting it dry. Um, it does at first wrinkle a little bit but then it flattens right back out after that um, dries I do apply the transfer to that and then I took a couple other transfers and just applied them in the spaces where um, there was no numbering I just thought they looked kind of cute but I'm wondering if it needs something more so like I said in the comments below let me know your thoughts on this whole project
for project four, I thrifted this container a while ago. And as you can see, I had a completely different vision for it initially. I painted it faded burlap. And now that I, it's been sitting around for a bit because I didn't like where it was going, I now have a new vision for it. I am using gypsy green. I'm painting just the very edge of the top, gypsy green. I'm doing one even coat, and then the rest of it, I will be painting sandy blonde. Now, my vision here is I want to incorporate that little fairy within this wreath. And I had actually moved the wreath around several times, figuring out exactly how I wanted to position it. And then I noticed that there were some birds in there. I'm like, oh my goodness, wouldn't that be my luck? I put this down, I put the fairy in, and the birds are upside down. So definitely watch for that when you lay your transfers down. I also wanted to make sure when I put the transfer on the lid that it was on the front versus the back side because there was like a little mark where that was actually the back side of the lid. And I finally got that down and then I want to incorporate that little fairy in there and you can see there's a big chunk of leaves on like below her feet. I cut a majority of that away and then I tuck her feet right in the actual um, wreath and she looks like she was always meant to be there. I could have stopped right there with the lid, but I decided to add an image to the front of the container. So I pulled out an image that really matched the little fairy on top. I think the colors are very coordinated. And before I applied her to the front, a couple things I looked for is I put the lid back on the container. I wanted to make sure that the image was not too large for the front where um, once I put the lid back on her head was covered. It was a perfect fit. I just had to make sure that I when I applied the transfer it was right to the very bottom and uh, some of the top of the transfer is covered but that's okay just as long as her pretty little face was still showing. Now the last step, I took Big Top and I completely sealed both uh, the lid and the bottom of the container. I let that dry and then this project is complete and you guys, I really think it turned out super cute. Did I say it was complete? Yeah, I kind of fibbed. I forgot that <laughs> I decided at the last minute I wanted to add a bit of dimension to the lid. Uh, the gypsy green was a little bit too bright, so I took black wax from DIY and I went around and I added a bit to the very edge of the lid and over the entire gypsy green. And I really think it toned it down a bit and I love how this now turned out. For project five, you guys know how I feel about little pans. Typically, I am always grabbing the enamelware. For whatever reason, uh, this caught my eye. <laughs> I don't know exactly why. I'm sure it was like the old vintage look of it and that little black candle. But what I decided to do here is I am painting the handle gypsy green. I am going to apply two even coats of gypsy green to the handle, let that dry very thoroughly, and then we're going to continue on with this little thrift flip. 
Next, I am going to take Sandy Blonde. I want to tie all these pieces together because I am going to be displaying them in a vignette. And if you did not watch my video when I used the Holly Glenn transfer, you'll definitely want to watch that. I used Sandy Blonde with all of those pieces as well. So when I create a display at Cranberry Fest, all these pieces are going to look amazing together. I'm applying one even coat of a sandy blonde to the front of this. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back and we are going to finish this project off. The first thing I want to point out is, did you notice I painted the rim gypsy green? I just felt like it tied the whole project together. I did also grab an image that did not have a background, but it was kind of cut out. And her mushroom cap, is that not just the cutest? So the key here is when you lay down the image, because the mushroom is actually over going over the edges, that's where you want to start. You want to make sure that that gets completely laid down first before you start working your way down. And once that is on, then I work my way and I do the exact same thing for the bottom. I just want to make sure that it completely adheres to the edges and that there's not a lot of overlap. Uh, once that's done, then you can start peeling that whole backing off. And this is so cute, you guys. I really think, um, I just love how the gypsy green and the sandy blonde with this image turn, you know, definitely transformed this old vintage pot. The last step here is I'm taking a damp rig and I am going to wet distress the handle because I really want a little bit of that black peeping through. So on all the raised edges, I just rub there. And even where the hole is, I kind of rub that as well just to make a little bit of that black peep through. The last thing we need to do here is completely seal the piece. And uh, like I said before, anytime you use a transfer, you do want to seal that. And with the DIY paint, you want to seal that as well because it can be reactivated with water. So I'm applying just an even coat of DIY's Big Top to the entire piece letting it dry and I had actually thought about adding a ribbon or something to this but I think it looks absolutely perfect just the way it is and you can hang it on your wall um, through like on a nail just through that little tiny hole. For project six, you guys know how much I love little wooden boxes and how I try to rescue every single one I find and transform it into a beautiful treasure. Um, this one was a no different. My vision for this though is I decided to paint the entire piece gypsy green and I applied two even coats of gypsy green to this. Initially, I had thought about painting the top sandy blonde and I'm kind of kicking myself for not doing that because I felt like afterwards the transfer did blend a little bit but overall, I am still loving the outcome of it, but I just want to be upfront about my decisions. And I thought, nope, I'm going to paint it all gypsy green. And so that's what I'm doing here right now. I'm applying two even coats of gypsy green to the entire piece, including the bottom, and I'm letting it dry. And then we're going to come back and we are going to finish this transformation. 
Now that it's completely dry, I'm picking out the wreath of choice. I decided on this one, and then I just am deciding on which fairy I want to include as well. I thought she was perfect, and just like I did with the last one, I'm going to tuck her in. But on this one, I'm going to leave all the leaves, and I'm going to kind of have the leaves overflow the edge. First, I am going to um, make sure that I centerize this wreath and I line it all up, lay it down, and I apply that. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, why the heck did you not go out and distress this ahead of time? <laughs> So I apply the transfer and then I take it outside and I use my hand sander and I distress some of the edges. I just want to make uh, just that un like that dark colored of the actual box come through a bit. Now you can see I distressed it. Oh, it looks so much better. I just love it. And now it's time to add the fairy. So I position her just so, and I kind of went back and forth of how I wanted to do this. Uh, I decide that I do want the leaves kind of going down a bit. And so once I position her just so, I apply her, and then I kind of have a little dilemma. I always like to add a little bit of something something to the front of these boxes. And I could not find a transfer that actually would fit on the front and I thought would tie everything together. So like in the last um, video, I had um, some floral on the front and some floral on the top. I just couldn't, I didn't like any of the fairies for the front. So I came up with a secondary option. Before I came up with this secondary option, I did seal the entire piece and what I would recommend doing is if you are going to stamp any lettering on a piece, I would do it before you seal it because once you seal the piece, the piece becomes a little bit more slick and what you're going to see in the next clip is that my stamps moved a little bit. When the piece is not sealed, like with the DIY paint, it's so much easier to stamp letters or an image on your piece. This is when I decided I was going to add the wording fairy dust to the very front. I thought it was kind of catchy um, and kind of cute. So I am using the letterpress set of stamps. And you guys, this is so fun. This set comes with three different fonts. You also get numbers included. So what I'm doing here is I'm laying out the wording and I am also using um, the thin mount and that is going to help me pick up these letters. Uh, the thin mount itself comes in a very large sheet. What I do with one is I cut it in half and then I have a very long piece and then I take the other half and I cut it into chunks for the smaller um, stamps as well. But the grid lines make it so easy to pick it up, make sure all these letters are really nice and straight. It also makes it really easy then to lay this back down and know where I'm stamping. So I lined up one of the grid lines with the very bottom of the actual box. Uh, what I'm doing here is just making sure that all the letters look pretty straight and they're not wonky because when you're working with smaller letters, it can kind of be hard to make sure all of them are perfectly perfect. But really, is any piece absolutely perfect? No, that's why it's handcrafted by you and me. And there could be just one wonky letter. And I recommend just embracing the imperfections of your piece. 
once you think that you have it as perfect as possible, I am using the IOD black ink and I am inking up those letters and now it is ready to hand stamp. And I, again, am lining that line up with the very bottom and with the very edge and I lay it down, I hold it in place and I just start rubbing. And really all of them look pretty darn good except when I lit, pull it off, the A was a little bit wonky. And I don't know where it happened, but um, I think it was when I went back and I tried to stamp it a second time. So what I do recommend is always have some baby wipes with you or near you. So what I did is I wiped off the A with a baby wipe. The ink is permanent once it dries. Before it dries, though, you have the ability to wipe it off. And that's what I did here. And I re-stamped it and it was all perfectly fine. For my seventh and final project, you guys, I loved those books so much from my last video that I wanted to create some for this one as well. And I had a bunch of these dark black books and I thought they would be absolutely perfect for the fairies. I also am using that vintage hymnal book again, and I am just randomly tearing paper here and there. I also um, do recommend when you tear the paper, tear towards you, you have much better control over your piece. And I am just randomly, just like I said, tearing. On the first book, I want to have it completely covered. On some of the others, I am just going to do sections. So on this second book, I just want a chunk on the top because there was some writing up there. So I am just kind of roughly measuring with my eye uh, and then tearing. And I love how the first book, if you look on the right, is turned out. And this one I think is going to be just as awesome. The very last book, it's a larger book, and on this one, I think I'm going to do more of like an offset look. So I took a big piece of paper, or the hymnal music paper, and I'm just going to tear off a little bit on the top and a little on each side and the bottom. And I think I just wanted to cover that little centerpiece. So I'm going to, like I said, offset it, and then I'm going to put a fairy transfer kind of offset as well. If you didn't catch my last video how I did this, I am using liquid patina and I am applying just a nice even coat of liquid patina and then I am smoothing back that hymnal paper and then again taking my brush and then smoothing out any of the wrinkles. Anytime I use a decoupage paper, I do the exact same thing. I call it a starter strip. So a starter strip of the liquid patina. Get that um, first piece or portion of the paper in place and then I work my way down and again this really helps have more control over your entire piece of paper and it alleviates a lot of the wrinkles. I'm going to do that with all three of the books and once those are dry then we're going to come back and we are going to apply the transfers. 
Now that they're all dry, I have them laid out how I want them, and I just peel off that backing, and then I start applying the transfers. And it they go on just so easy, and I love how these transfers look with that hymnal paper, and then they really pop off of that the black books. To finish this project off, I am going to add some of my favorite twine, as I'm doing that, I do want to mention that I did seal the entire front of the book with Big Top. So after I applied the transfer, I did one even coat of Big Top to the entire front of the book, let that dry very thoroughly, and now we're adding the twine. And I'm just going around three times, tying a double knot, and then after um, I do that, I do add a piece of that little bit of that green ribbon to each of these just to tie it all together. What did you guys think of the fairy merry christmas i love this transfer i hope you guys do too i am getting more back in stock on thursday so definitely be watching for that do not think you are not going to be able to get your hands on these i will be getting glenn holly uh the fairy merry christmas and the candy cane cottage all back in stock on thursday i am listing them at noon and that way everyone will know noon central standard time i will list them all they should be delivered i'm assuming sometime during the day so do not fret if you did not get your hands on either of the transfers or any of the transfers i should say because you still have an opportunity um what was my favorite you guys i'm having so much fun flipping these books Yes, I was told that I missed out on a huge opportunity on the last video. You know, honestly, I get so involved <laughs> in my thrift flips that I didn't even read the title. So I appreciate the fact that you guys all said that I should have read the title and that would have been an awesome opportunity to definitely leave that wording out. Unfortunately, I didn't, but thanks for pointing that out to me. Um, but in today's video, this book is my favorite and I am keeping her for myself. She is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the minute I was flipping through the um, transfer book, I'm like, oh my gosh, how can I use her? I And so yes, she's staying with me. So I try not to keep any of my thrift flips. I try to put everything into my booth but every now and again, I fall in love with something and this is one of them. So she will be staying with me. Um, for Friday's video, you guys are getting another Thrift to Treasure and it is going to be another new IOD product. This time, I'm gonna give you a hint, it's going to be a mold and you guys are gonna have, oh, you guys are gonna love it because I have been putting a lot of thought and effort into this one and it is cute it is definitely sweet so you're gonna love it or maybe just i love it i don't know but i can't wait to show you what i've come up with on friday um this week i am going live tonight over on youtube and facebook uh we are upcycling some picnic baskets at uh six o'clock central time wednesday at 10 o'clock i will be live again whether we finish the baskets tonight or we'll finish them on Wednesday um, or come up with another project because believe me, I have a lot. 
Uh, update on Cranberry Fest. So this past weekend, I was supposed to start bleaching the flannels. Unfortunately, I did not get to those because uh, it was an all day event on Saturday for my daughter's volleyball. Um, started right away in the morning and it ran very late in the afternoon. By the time I got home, I was pretty spent from just being there all day. Uh, Sunday, it rained all day here. So uh, this week, I am tackling that. I'm hoping on Wednesday. So Tuesday, I'm doing a barn quilt painting session. Um, I'm officially starting to paint the barn quilts. Many of you have been asking about that. Um, I have been hand drawing each of those. Uh, the whole the whole barn quilt um, is a is a pretty lengthy process. So I you know I get the wood, I cut the wood, I paint the wood, I draw the design on the barn quilt, and then now I start painting. So I have eighty of those to paint. I will definitely get started tomorrow. I'm going to show you on a reel like how they how I do. Tw I'm going to do twenty at a time. So I'm going to show you that tomorrow. Um, maybe the reel will go up Wednesday, depending on how it goes. So will you guys have yourselves a great week. I did a lot of jibber jabbering. I'm sorry about that. And we will see you Friday. Bye. Bye.